Hello, everybody. Welcome to UC Berkeley. We are so, so excited to have you here today for our UC Berkeley virtual panel for admitted and waitlisted students. We just first of all like to take a second to say we are so grateful to have you here on our virtual tour for this hour. We know that there is a lot happening in the world today, and we are just extremely grateful that you've chosen to spend this hour with us. And furthermore, congratulations for being admitted to Cal or being waitlisted. This is such a huge, huge accomplishment and we are so proud of you and we can't wait to see everything that you will do hopefully at Cal over the next four years. So today's visit will be a virtual panel. So it'll be a one hour panel with a Q&A and absolutely any questions you have about anything related to Cal, please do feel free to type them into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We have disabled the chat, but our ambassadors are absolutely happy to answer questions through the Q&A. And we also have many, many online resources that you can check out if you are left with any questions. You can go to visit.berkeley.edu, which is our website where you registered for this panel, and you can also go and check out other recorded vi virtual visits there. There's also engineering visits and general campus tour visits. You can also email us at tour at berkeley.edu if you have any questions and a student ambassador will answer your question. And finally, you can check out Cal Student Central for all things related to financial aid info and more. And with that, I'm just going to take a quick second to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Seneca, and I will be your moderator today. I use the pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm from Goleta, California, which is on the central coast of California, around 100 miles north of Los Angeles. I'm a junior here at Cal, or a third year, and I am majoring in molecular and cell biology with a minor in bioengineering. A few of the things that I'm involved in on campus are Greek life. I also am a part of a bioengineering student organization called Bioprinting at Berkeley, which is basically where we have a modified 3D printer and some fancy gel scaffolds, and we basically try to create human organs using 3D printing. I think it's pretty cool. I'm also part of the dance community here at Cal with, with an organization called DanceWorks, where I do both contemporary and hip hop. And then finally, during a typical semester, I am involved in Cal Greek's Alcohol Task Force, which aims to promote safe partying and alcohol consumption practices on our campus in the Greek community through education. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to our awesome ambassadors for today. Thank you, Seneca. And uh, I just want to give you a round of applause. I can't believe I'm friends with someone who is a part of a team that is 3D printing organs. Like that, as a social science major, that blows my mind, honestly. But uh, let me introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Andres. I am uh, use a he, him, his pronouns. I am from Fontana, California. I'm a sophomore studying political science in Spanish, uh, but that Spanish actually has an emphasis in Portuguese as well. So woohoo, let's go reading and languages. I actually do really love learning about languages and cultures, which is something I really hope to do in my, uh, in my future. A few things I'm a part of on campus include Hermanos Unidos, which is a community org for individuals who identify as Latinx, uh, try, just trying to build up that community on campus. I am also part of the Public Service Center's internship program, uh, which uh, allows me to be part of a nonprofit in Oakland, Somos Familia, which does amazing work with the Latin Latinx community. I'm also a part of URAP, which uh, if you have any questions regarding research or anything that you know you're uh, that's related to that, please feel free to uh, send those questions. Uh, uh, once again, congratulations to all the uh, newly admitted and waitlisted students. Like if I could have uh, the fireworks special effects on my screen right now, I would totally do that. Uh, it, it really is a giant feat to get to this point. And, you know, we hope to include you in our Golden Bear family. And from that, I'll pass it on to my fellow co-tour panelists. I'm so excited to do a, a panel with them today. It's like my dream sometimes. Hi, everyone. My name is Beatrice. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. I'm originally from Oakland, California, so that's right next to our campus in Berkeley. I am also a sophomore planning to double major in human geography and political economy. And apart from being a campus ambassador, I'm the blog editor for our university's newspaper, The Daily Californian. So if you have any questions about journalism, I can answer those. Um, I'm also a part of DanceWorks, so I have the pleasure of dancing with Seneca when we are in person. Um, and I'm also a part of Greek Life. 
Hi everyone, my name is Tina. I use the she, hers, hers pronouns. I'm from a small suburb of Los Angeles, California, and I'm also a current sophomore here at UC Berkeley. My majors are electrical engineering, computer science, and business administration under the management, entrepreneurship, and technology program. Um, some of things I'm involved with here at UC Berkeley, the Society of Women Engineers, Golden Bureau Orientation, and the ASUC, which is our student government. And with that, let's get started. Um, so we're just going to take a quick second to launch a poll just to get to know you all a little bit better so we can tailor today's panel for you and just, you know, introduce our fantastic ambassadors. Let me just real quick. Oops, sorry. All right. So with that, here we are. And thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, our first question is about housing, and this question is for Beatrice. So could you just give us an overview of the different Cal housing options and highlight, can you choose your roommates? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm happy to see that we have entirely admitted undergraduate students um, on our panel today. So again, congratulations. I'm sure that housing is something that is on your mind right now. So here at Berkeley, we have a lot of different options for housing. And I'll preface this by saying that even if you are living in campus owned housing, it is technically not on campus, which is a little bit unique to Berkeley, but that's not to worry. Um, most of them are about a block or even less right across the street from campus. And it's a pretty unique experience because you get to walk through the city of Berkeley a little bit on your way to class. Um, so that being said, we have both residential halls and suites. Um, and you can choose whichever works best for you. The residential halls are your more typical high rise. Um, there's both multiple gender and single gender floors. You can choose which works best for you. Um, and you'll share a bathroom with everyone on your floor. And those rooms are mostly double and triple occupancy um, under normal conditions. Uh, so those are the residential halls and they're located mostly in our units, which are units one, two, and three. Those are all on the south side of our campus. Um, and it's like, there's like four to six buildings centered around a courtyard area. Um, and that's kind of how the units are set up. And then we also have Blackwell Hall, which is that same, um, it's all doubles, but you also do share a bathroom with your floor and that's a newer um, residential hall. So that's an option too. It's right across the street from campus. And then in terms of suite style housing, we have Foothill. Um, which is on the east side of our campus. And then we also have Clark Kerr, which is a little bit further south than the units. Um, it's a little bit more in the neighborhood. And those have some suite style rooms, as I said, where you will have a room with your roommates and then you'll share a common space and a bathroom with another room. Um, so you can kind of choose whichever housing option works best for you. You'll rank different preferences when you fill out your housing application. Um, and we highly recommend that you submit it on time and choose any room, any location as your last option. Um, because as you're filling out your preferences, you'll choose like a double in unit one or a triple in unit two. So it's the type of room and then the location where you wanna be. So that's kind of how housing works. If you have more questions or want links, um, you can feel free to ask in the Q&A. And then in terms of choosing a roommate, you absolutely can choose a roommate if you want to. Um, there's Facebook groups that you can join or if you know someone from your hometown, you can choose a roommate. And I think there's just a way to input that you'd like to be each other's roommate on the housing application. You also can go random. Um, I know a lot of people that went random. I personally went random. I got assigned two roommates. One of them I clicked with really well, one of them not so much, but that's totally fine. I'm really happy to have found one good friend out of that. Um, and yeah, it's really up to you. And there's a lot of flexibility with housing. But no matter what you choose, I think it's a really good experience and a great way to get more integrated to the campus community. Yes, totally agree. Housing, especially freshman year, is a really great way just to kind of build a first community at Cal. And I was opposite of Beatrice. I actually chose my roommates through the incoming class of, for me, 2022, for all of you, either 2025 or 2023 Facebook group. And 
highly recommend that as well. And our next question is also kind of regarding the freshman experience and it is for Andres. And that is, what was your freshman experience like? Do you have any recommendations for the best places to study or hang out on campus? If you could just elaborate on that. Yeah, so our, uh, at least at least for, I think me, Beatrice and Tina, our freshman experience was completely different uh, than what would be a typical traditional college uh, year in that, uh, we started off in the fall in person, and then in the spring, we had to slowly transition to the hybrid online learning. But at least during my time on campus, I, I uh, as a freshman, as a first year, I really did, you know, find a community on campus. Uh, it was really, really, uh, you know, something that I didn't expect, mainly because I did come into campus not really knowing anyone, but I put myself out there. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go join some clubs. I'm gonna go talk some, to some people in my classes, uh, you know, and I'm just gonna follow, you know, go with the flow because typically in Berkeley, um, you're hard pressed to find anyone who's, who's not down to go take a study session with you or who isn't down to like say, hey, you wanna go hang out on the Memorial Glade and just chill out there for a while. Like a lot of people at Berkeley really do have that sense of community and that sense of like, we're in this together, we're helping each other out. And that really is like, just an amazing feeling to have. And as in regards to like studying spots with people who are like this, at least during like you know, your freshman year when you're still getting the hang of things, you tend to find yourself in a lot of libraries. I think a lot of people, especially for myself, uh, I never really thought of a library as like a place where I can go study. Um, I mainly thought, oh, I'll go check out like that one book that, that one author wrote and I was super interested in it, but now I wanna go read it again. At Cal, our libraries are just as important as OSCE because it's a place where we're able to maintain our, our a good and healthy relationship with our studies uh, because it's a nice tranquil place where you're able to just focus on your work uh, and have that atmosphere because when you're in an atmosphere surrounded by other people who, who are able to like think in the same way as like relating to what you're doing uh, when you're studying, it, it just makes it so much easier for you to be like, okay, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna write my research paper now. And we have over 24 uh, official libraries on campus. So many, many of places to uh, just have that mindset uh, at Cal. Totally agree. And for all of those who are new to Cal, Ossie is our mascot. He is a golden bear. You might see him around campus. And if you look up photos on our website, I'm sure you will find him. He wears this little jumper um, a sweater, a little yellow sweater, and is just very cute. Definitely recommend, you know, giving him a hug, taking a selfie with him when you see him on campus for the first time. He rocks. So our next question is just for Tina, and that is going to be, what is the workload like if we want to potentially double major? Is this manageable? And is it still possible to have a work-life balance? Yeah, totally. Um, I would say it definitely depends on what two majors you want to double major in. The more overlap they have, the easier workload's definitely going to be. For my two majors, they have absolutely no overlap whatsoever. So I take a lot of units and a lot of classes. However, I'm still surviving. You know, I, um, I have this job. I'm involved with things. It's pretty fun. I would say the great thing about Berkeley is that there's just so many options for you to choose from. And it's kind of like being put in front of a big buffet and you just don't know what you want. But like the great thing about your freshman year is that you could try everything at the buffet and then your following years, you could just keep picking whatever you want, you know? But I would definitely say um, a good work-life balance is... <laughs> Google Calendar, I have said this many, many, many times, but like just, just some kind of planning thing. I, I personally use Google Calendar, this is not an ad for Google Calendar, but if Google Calendar wants to sponsor me, I don't even know if they do that, but if they do, hit me up. <laughs> but um, the, the thing that I found really hard uh, transitioning to college is that in high school, I had a very set time schedule. I would go to school from this time to this time. And then after school, I have track practice. And then after that, I have work, you know, very set after that, I do homework. But in college, your classes, for instance, when we were on campus, I had a class at 8 a.m. And then classes peppered throughout the day. And then my final class ended at 8 p.m. You know, I was on campus for 12 hours. And that was only one day of the week. For other days, I'll have one class at like 11 a.m., you know, but really just scheduling out your day and trying to stick to schedule really made 
my um, work-life balance fairly easy, so. Awesome, total plug for Google Calendar. I also use it and I think it's just really useful because you can also share it with somebody if you're trying to find a time to hang out. Great option. Our next question is for Beatrice and this is kind of regarding professors, you know, the professors rock and we are wondering what's the professor student relationship like? How open are they to helping you? I would say very open. Um, you just have to seek out that help. So it, all professors have office hours every week and that's a great way to get to know them. It's a time where you can either just show up or you can sign up for appointments, whatever system they go by um, and you can go and talk to them, ask them about material that's being covered in the class or just about academics in general, research that they're doing, just pretty much anything you want. Um, they're really there to get to know their students. Um, and like, even if their office hours don't work for you, I'm sure every professor will set up a different time to meet with you if you have a question you really wanna ask them. Um, so I would say it's definitely like, they're not, they're not gonna come to you and say, like, what are your questions? But if you go to them, they're so open to answering any questions that you have. And not only that, but they really do want to get to know you as a person, at least in my experience. Um, right in my very first semester, I didn't go to a ton of office hours, but I went to a couple and I came in completely undeclared. But those professors really helped me think about how I should go about choosing a major and gave me some really good advice for that. Um, one of my professors, I went to his office hours a few times, and then later that, or after that semester over winter break, I was like in a grocery store with my mom, and he like walked up and said hi to me, um, and I like introduced him to my mom, so now he knows my mom too, um, so I would say that's really just a testament to how much they want to get to know you, not just as a student, but as a person, um, if you go and put yourself out there and ask them questions. Absolutely. I can say that they're also great resources for professional advice and kind of following along with that, we are asking now what college are you all in just to kind of get to know our audience again. So this is what college you've been admitted to. And this kind of goes along with our next question as well, which is just going to be what has been your favorite class and can you talk about one within your major and one outside of your major and anyone who wants to can answer this. Go no, please Seneca. Um, <laughs> so like really the beauty of Berkeley is that your classes can be taken in so many different fields like once you first get onto campus depending on what major you're in depending on what college you're in you're you're required to take some classes that are specifically related to your major and some that are just a little bit outside of it like an example would be in the college of engineering yes you have a lot of engineering classes laid out for you in the future but you also have a few breadth requirements that just require you to take some kind of like uh, uh, a social science class uh, for example so at least in my case i'm part of the college of letters and sciences so i had to take a few classes uh within my major political science and, or my majors political science and portuguese the spanish and portuguese as well as some that were outside of it so one of my favorite ones outside of uh these two majors were uh it was called the history of art uh the beauty and truth in islamic art and i love that class because it exposed me to a completely different and new culture and i feel like me coming from you know southern california at least in my community i i find a lot of people who are also latinx who are also hispanic and in in these regards i don't really i did i never really had like a interaction or was able to learn about different and new cultures to me so when I got to Cal and I was learning about Islamic art, it was just completely amazing. And I got to learn so much and appreciate an entirely new culture. And I think that was just amazing. Um, but, you know, a, a, a class that I really loved that's inside my major or one of my two majors, I, you know, I won't give specifics for each and every single one of them. But uh, for political science, we took a class. I took a class that was called uh, Race and the American Dilemma. Uh, and let me tell you, it was such an amazing way thing to like have a class that was directed and taught by a professor who really truly cared about teaching the material, about making sure that we were understanding what we were learning in a way that made sense to us, accommodating to our different, you know, because everyone might have different paces at which they learn. And he was truly there trying to help us out as much as possible uh, within uh, that class, learning about how race in the United States uh, plays in part with uh, politics and the government 
and just trying to make sure that we were able to learn and bridge that gap and see what can be done about it because it wasn't just in theory but what we could actually do and we actually had, had this project that he had us do which was make a podcast and interview some people from different generations and i thought that was just an amazing thing and an entirely new experience that i didn't expect when i first took that class man that sounds so cool now i kind of want to take more like social science humanities classes because i really haven't taken that many but personally my favorite um <laughs> my favorite class i've taken that's within my major is uh cs61b which is data structures and this is a really big class at berkeley because a lot of students are computer science majors or eats majors and stuff like that and going into it i was terrified it's when i took it it was with professor hilfinger and I've heard things that they're like, don't take it with this professor, you know, uh, wait for the other professor. But I took it with him because I was like, you know what? I He's a pioneer in computer science. He's been around before all the languages we use now, before Python, before Java, before SQL, all these things. And I wanted to learn from someone who helped create the major I'm in, you know? And this class was so hard. And yet I've learned the most I've ever learned in my entire life. It was crazy. Like constantly, like he, the way he would describe computer programming language, because he, he literally helped build some of these things that I'm learning now. And it, it was just crazy and amazing. And um, the final project, we had to reverse engineer Git, like GitHub, if you're, I know somebody's in the college of engineering, so they might know what this is, but most of you probably don't know what this is, but it's basically this like file control system on your computer and we had to program it. And we've done many projects leading up to it. And in those projects, he would give us this little starter code. I would download it on my computer, I would open it up. And then he's like, fill in here, fill in here. This is what you're supposed to do, right? But <laughs> I download the, the Git thing and then I open it. And it has one file, only one file. I open the one file and it says write code here. And that's all it says. And I wanted to freak out. I was like, how am I supposed to write this like, like, I don't know, like two gigabyte, like code, whatever. And it freaked me out, but I did it. And like all the people in those class, like all the people in the class have done it. People for like, I don't know, it's just crazy to think that I was able after, and I took this class my freshman year too. After my freshman year, I knew how to build basically the software on my computer just from that one class. And it's by far one of my favorite classes I've taken at Berkeley. The professors here are amazing as Andres has talked about. It's just, it's crazy. You don't really get this education anywhere. And one place you get it is from Berkeley. Speaking of that, one class I took that was outside my major, that was my favorite, was actually an English class. And I'm not an English person at all. Like, no, I, I can't. But you have to take English classes at Berkeley because they're part of your general education. So I took this one class called Reading and Writing in Digital Age with Professor Zeevid, and she's amazing. Like, she's phenomenal. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but it turns out that this class specifically was about um, from like the beginning of the internet till now and how writing has shaped our culture. And I found it so interesting because it somehow tied into my major and yet showed me a completely different point of view of everything I've ever learned, but from the humanity side. And we talked about blogging, we talked about how documentaries and movies have changed our culture and stuff like that. And I even learned there was this thing called digital humanities that's basically humanities, but like my major, which is so weird. And it's just, uh, it was a great class. It, actually made me want to take more English classes after that. And I did, and I did not love it as much as Professor Zeeben's classes, but they were still really fun. That's awesome. I always love to hear what people's favorite classes are because there's just so many classes here at Berkeley that you never know. I know that one of our other campus ambassadors always will go off about this introduction to mycology class he took and talk about mushrooms. And I'm just like, what the? So cool. So I just 
it's just amazing. Highly recommend checking out the course catalog if you're interested in learning more about like the classes look like. And our next question comes from our audience. Somebody asks, how do you feel regarding safety on and around campus? My main concern is just feeling safe in such an urban environment. Beatrice, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I can answer this. Um, yeah, so Berkeley is in an urban area and that comes along with the things that come along in every urban area. I think the key to campus safety, first of all, we have a lot of different campus safety measures in place. Um, we have our UC police department located on our campus. We have blue light poles all throughout our campus. So you can simply press a button and be in contact with either UC police department or um, 911 operators. Um, so those are all over campus and they're easy to spot. Um, we also have our there, we have some night specific safety services. So we have our night safety shuttle, which is a bus. All you need to do is show your Berkeley ID and you can get on for free. And this will, it runs through campus and also to areas where a lot of students live, both in campus housing and just where there's a lot of off campus apartments located. Um, so that's a great option if you need to get home at night. We also do have our bear walk um, service, which is students who have been trained, they wear a uniform, they have a radio, and you can either call them or I think sign up online um, and they'll come meet you wherever you are and take you to wherever you need to go. So that's a great system. Um, if you're walking alone at night, but don't wanna be alone, they'll provide a buddy for you. Also maybe a good way to make a friend. I've heard that they're good at conversation. Um, so those are just a few of our campus safety services. Oh, one last thing I'll throw in is we have warn me alert system, which will send you texts and emails and let you know areas that you should avoid at a specific time or just kind of what's going on. So for example, if there's power outages, which have happened sometimes, um, they'll let you know when that's happening just so that everyone stays in the loop and informed. So I think the key to campus safety is just being aware both of your surroundings and what your resources are. You know, there's some general guidelines to follow when you're walking down the street in any city, like maybe don't have your headphones in, don't be on your phone, um, be aware of your surroundings, have a buddy if you're walking at night. But I think that with all of the services that Berkeley has in place and also just that kind of general awareness of my surroundings, I personally have never felt unsafe on or around campus. Um, that's just my experience. But I think it's good to just kind of have everything in mind as you're walking around and you should be fine. Highly recommend Fairwalk. I used it to go home almost every night freshman year and I found it to be really, really helpful and just kind of gives you a layer of extra comfort of mind, peace of mind. You also are just seeing a poll pop up on your screen and we're just asking where you're joining us from. So looks like we've got a few Northern California, some Eastern time zone, very exciting. Welcome, welcome. And our next question is also about housing. So kind of tying into where you're from and that is which type of housing did all of our panelists stay at specifically? And are there any favorite memorable experiences from the dorms? How would you describe the dorms at Berkeley in general? Tina, do you wanna go for it? Totally. So I personally stayed in unit one, uh, free ward building. It's the best, no matter what anyone says. You know, <laughs> one thing you'll find about uh, Berkeley is that we have so many housing options a lot of times if they liked where they stayed their freshman year, like students will rep it. So you don't want freeborn, amazing, loved it. Um, I I love the dorms, they were so fun. I My favorite memory is, so on, on the floor, one of my best friends, Sam, lived like down the hall from me. And he, it was kind of this like running joke on the floor that like he was always in the restroom. Like whenever you were in the restroom, you know, talk, like the restrooms are actually a very like talkative place, at least in my dorm, where like you'll walk in and you're like, oh, hi, how are things going? You're like, start up a conversation. It doesn't sound as weird. It's not as weird as it sounds. It actually happens a lot. But um, so there's this like running joke that Sam lives in the restroom. So one day I decided to take the name tag off of his door and put it on the restroom door 
And everyone's like, haha, that's funny. And when he found it, he was like, only Tina could have done this. No one else would have done this. So he took mine and stuck it on the top of our ceiling. And Sam's a very, very tall guy. And I'm not nearly as tall as Sam. So I could not get my name tag off the ceiling. But I did eventually. And then <laughs> it like sparked this whole like name tag war on like this floor and then like it moved up to like different floors too and I think at one point like a name tag was inside the piano and like the lounge and like at, <laughs> and somebody like put a name tag in the elevator doors so it's not very safe but somehow they did it and they still got it out and it was just this like funny thing that went on for weeks and it was just one of my most memorable one of my most memorable things from BC Berkeley and just dorm life because you just get into crazy shenanigans like that so totally i can say that unit two is without a doubt the best um residential hall area you know just having lived there myself <laughs> um so our next question is just going to be how is berkeley like for you as a first generation student andres do you want to take this one yeah, so I'm a I'm a first generation student. I believe uh, Tina is as well. So if you want to add on after me, Tina, I'd more, be more than happy to hear from you as well. But from my own experience, I really it was like that that famous song from Frozen Two, Into the Unknown, where like I really didn't know what I was really stepping into yet because no one in my background, not you know, my parents didn't go to college, my, not many of my extended family even like went to any type of college or higher institution. So it was really just daunting and like I was very much intimidated, uh, but Berkeley truly did provide a lot of resources for to me to be able to feel comfortable enough to be able to excel in that matter. And I mean, like uh, I was able to do the program called Summer Bridge and Summer Bridge is uh, available to students who are from underrepresented communities, first generation, low income. And basically they take you in and they teach you the ropes of how to do you know, pretty much a university, how to be a college student. And I, and I really found a lot of uh, help from the program because everyone there, everything was structured to make sure that you were being introduced and being able to learn the ropes. You know, I still had to take out my phone to look at uh, Google Maps to try and find my classes. But when the first day of fall first came around, I, I felt very much prepared and I was still able to take uh, advantage of a, a lot of different uh, um, varying uh, programs and resources like EOP, the Educational Opportunity Program, as well as many different, uh, you know, financial aid offices provide a lot more assistance and one-on-one -on -one work uh, so you can get that help. And even my advisors for my two majors, uh, they were amazing when it came to trying to like make sure I understood everything and meetings, emails, they were very much understanding and there for me when I needed it the most. Yeah, all that, I totally agree with Andres. Um, I would just say, personally, as a first-generation student, I was terrified to go to college, although, like, really excited, because I was like, you know, like, no one has ever, like, kind of hyped up college, but it was just kind of like, oh, as Andres says, like, into the unknown, and I was very excited, and one thing I would say is great about Berkeley is just all the programs that they have in place for students like us like Andres did summer bridge I didn't do summer bridge but um I'm a part of EOP and the career center also has a lot of first generation things I, I just remember signing up for this like first generation like uh celebration from EOP before COVID and <laughs> I don't know if Andres went to this but like I signed up he did and like I got a free shirt I got like a button I got like it was so fun and they had tacos like of like a real taco like a taco man and I hadn't had tacos in so long so, you know Andres and I are both in SoCal great tacos and I was like oh my god this, this this is great and then they had so many like faculty members and just people speaking about how they were also first generation and it was just a really really fun time and um <laughs> there was also the career center also had this event that was like for for first generations and they really taught you all the stuff that you need to know, like how to find internships, how to leverage your network. And I found that incredibly helpful also. I can highly recommend it. EOP is a fantastic program. So definitely go check it out. Um, I think 
there, if you just go UC Berkeley EOP into Google, it will be that first result that pops up. And our next question is also just kind of related to the atmosphere of Berkeley. And this is from our audience today. Um, somebody asks, is UC Berkeley a competitive atmosphere? Would you consider the academics here to be very hardcore, especially compared to high school? And just kind of elaborating on that, maybe touching on grade deflation. Um, Beatrice, if you want to take that one. Yeah, this is a pretty common question, and I think that a pretty common answer would be that no, it's not competitive, but it is collaborative. Um, you'll hear that being said a lot, and I think that yes, the academics are rigorous. I mean, we are a top public university, so you have to expect that a little bit. Um, you will be challenged, your ideas will be challenged, and you know what you can handle will be challenged. But there are a lot of ways to kind of ease that stress. And I think a lot of it comes from working with others, whether that be through our Student Learning Center, which provides study groups as well as one-on-one -on -one tutoring to students at no cost, um, or just like working with your peers in class. I know that I made some friends my very first semester just from like seeing them in my discussion section. And then we ended up studying together and then we became friends that way, or even this semester, my classes have different um, online platforms that we use for group chats and people, when there's a problem set due, they'll say, hey, we're having a Zoom call at this time, like everyone hop on um, and we'll go on Zoom together and work through all the problems together. And I think that's really a great example of Berkeley students coming together, even when we're scattered all over the world um, to work together to kind of conquer um, what our professors are throwing at us. Um, so yeah, I would say it's definitely a step up from high school. I mean, everyone has different high school experiences and everyone's going to experience their classes in college in a different way. But I think for everyone, it is a step up, but that's to be expected. And there's a lot of resources available to help you um, handle that. I definitely agree. I think that the resources are just fantastic. Um, is anyone else wanting to add on to this question or we can move on? Awesome. Okay, cool. So our next question is just a little bit more lighthearted. We're going to be chatting about the social life at Cal, which spoiler alert is fantastic. So um, Tina, could you elaborate on how is the social life at Cal? Is it easy to have fun with friends or are you always busy studying or with internships? Yeah, um, <laughs> contrary to what I thought when I uh, first entered Cal, um, there's actually a lot like a busting social life at Berkeley. And it's so fun. I think part of it is that it's, it's so weird, but it, even though we're like in a big city and we're right next to a big city, it feels kind of like a small town as in you like know a bunch of people, everyone like knows kind of the same things and stuff like that. Like if I say Jaguar, Jared, karaoke everybody here knows like exactly what that is and like when you're like when you're like let's go to La Burrita they're like okay you know stuff like that so it's like it's super fun and I will say studying is a big part of college any college you go to you're gonna have to study um internships uh depending on your major stuff like that right it's, these are things that happen at every college but it's so fun it's so easy to have fun with friends because in Berkeley, it's like this like mix of like urban and rural. Like I go this, they're like these great like fire trails you could hike on for the weekend, take you like, I don't know how long it actually takes you. I've never actually tied myself, but they're, they're a fun time. And you could always hike the big sea. You could always like venture into SF for like an hour if you want, you know, go get some lunch or something like that. But it's, it's always, there's always things to do. There's always people to do them with. So it's a fun time at Berkeley. You just have to find opportunities. I highly agree. I also just want to say my biggest recommendation for all of our admitted waitlisted students, students considering going to college in general, is to get involved. And that's really how I think that a lot of us find that social life and those friends. So big recommendation for that. Our next question is for Beatrice, and that is just regarding the size of UC Berkeley. Do you ever feel like it's too big? How does that impact your daily life as a student? And just elaborate on that a little. Yeah, so in short, no, I don't feel like it's too big. I also always knew that I wanted to go to a big school. 
because it's kind of a famous quote among the campus ambassadors, you can always make a big school feel small, but you can never make a small school feel big. And I think that's so true at Berkeley. One of my favorite things this past year, as I've like gotten to know some more people and gotten my footing a little bit more, is how I don't think I meet a single person who doesn't know another person that I know. And it's really cool to find all of those connections um, among just kind of everyone you meet. Um, people will keep popping up in different places and you'll be like, oh my God, I didn't know that you were interested in that as well. Um, and it's just really fun to build a network in that way. Um, and it makes you feel like you are a part of a community. So yeah, it goes back to getting involved in stuff. And the more you get involved, the more you meet more people and realize that they know other people that you know. Um, and it really does feel like a small school, you'll always run into people and they'll always be saying hi. Um, I get put in like group chats with people who realize that they all know me from different places and it's slightly confusing, but I think it's really fun and it's a really unique opportunity to be at a campus that big, but have all of the opportunity to explore and make it feel smaller and make it really your own home. Um, yeah, I think that sums it up. I totally agree. I actually ran into Beatrice at the info session for Campus Ambassadors a year ago after having dance practice with her. And so it just goes to show it's big school, but it feels like a small school, if that makes sense. So our next question is just regarding like the area around Berkeley and what are your favorite restaurants and cafes to go to around Cal? Where do people eat? Do people prefer the dining halls or eating out? Andres, if you want to take that one. Yeah, and I feel like this question really does help make, you know, with, uh, with the previous question that these cafes and these restaurants and these eating areas, cafeterias and such really do help contribute to make this, this place feel a lot smaller, a lot more personal, not smaller, but it, it has a more personality, right? As more to give. So in my opinion, some of the best places to eat around Cal include Cafe Durant. Uh, it is like, it has like this little balcony area. It's on Durant and it has amazing breakfast food. So after a, like a long night of being at social events or doing something or studying, you go in the morning, they have amazing breakfast in the morning, but a little bit, you know, a little bit farther of a walk towards downtown Berkeley, you can find uh, Platano, which is a Salvadoran uh, eating uh, restaurant and it has amazing pupusas and, you know, uh, being from the Latinx community, I knew I wanted to like have some food that really reminded me, but let me tell you, this food doesn't remind me of food at back at home. This reminds me and of new memories and new experiences that I made with friends there. And it was just, it's just a really great and affordable place to eat. Uh, as well as Pedro's Cafe, which is a Brazilian cafe. And I, you know, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I do hopefully intend to be studying abroad uh, in Brazil in the spring. But I hope that, you know, interest was really like pushed by being able to eat at so many different places around Cal that has so many different cultures and so many different like traditions and customs and foods and you know you get to learn and experience a lot of that by being around in such a, like a multi-ethnic uh, environment i you know i had never seen uh ethiopian or or west african food until i got to cal and once i tried it let me tell you it is amazing and you get to make a lot of these experiences with friends when you you go out to eat and such and you know i prefer when I do have the money, and thankfully I do have a job, this amazing campus ambassador job, I do like to go out to eat. Uh, but I tend to find places which are a lot more affordable, which you know can be found around uh, the campus community. But you know, never fear, you still have Cafe Three there. Uh, it is, it's still up. Uh, my opinion, my opinion, and it's only my opinion. Cafe Three has amazing food when it's good. But if you want, you know, just stable, consistent food, you go to Crossroads. Um, and, you know, they're not that much of a walk. Uh, you know, it's not like going up to the Foothill dining room, which is just a long walk. Uh, that's the only negative for me, but, you know, I've heard good reviews, but that's in my opinion. You can find a lot of community in these cafes and restaurants uh, and learn about new cultures, but also if you just want consistent, or not consistency, but if you want a place where, you know, you can uh, just socialize with friends without having to worry about spending money, you can always go to the food uh, dining halls and get food there.
Yes, I actually met my current roommate and best friend in the dining hall. So just go, you know, you never know. Start talking to the person at the table next to you. You might make a really good friend. So our next question swings back to academics and it's for Tina. What preparation have you been doing to apply for Haas? Did the opportunities vary greatly between the Haas Business Administration and economic students in LNS? Maybe elaborate on that a bit. Yeah, I actually don't have to apply to Haas because I'm very lucky I got into the MET program. So that I haven't really been doing anything to prepare to apply to Haas. But uh, the opportunities between Haas students and like economic student, like econ students in um, LNS really aren't that varied. A lot of econ students are pre-Haas majors. Um, a lot of them just... Uh, either don't get into Haas or just decide to not apply to Haas. And a lot of them just get the same job afterwards. Like um, you can even take Haas classes if you're not a Haas student, if there's room available. I've met a ton of like just regular students in my Haas classes. So I would say, don't worry too much about it. Haas is a great program, but it's not the only program. You know, you go to Berkeley, there are a ton of great programs. Very true. I actually am considering taking personal financial management in Haas, which is just a really cool class that kind of teaches you about finance. So definitely would recommend exploring classes that aren't necessarily in your field of study or in your college. You can really expand your horizons there. So our next question is for Beatrice, and it is, what is the main mode of transportation to get around the local area? What are some fun places that you have been? So I would say walking is definitely the primary mode of transportation. Um, Berkeley is a little bit hilly. It's a little bit crowded. I, I mean, you can bike. Some students bike or skateboard or scooter, but generally you can walk everywhere that you need to go. You'll get a little bit of a workout in depending on where that is. But yes, if you need to go a little bit further, a lot of students will choose to take the buses. Shout out to AC Transit. We have a great local transportation system um, and all Berkeley students um, are given a Clipper card, which gives them free access to the bus. Um, and those run all around our campus and they'll get you wherever you need to go in the East Bay. And then if you wanna go further, you can hop on BART, which stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit. It's a little bit like the Metro system in the Bay Area. And there's a station in downtown Berkeley, not too far from our campus where you can get to San Francisco in just about 30 minutes. So those are some great transportation options. I would say you don't really need a car in Berkeley. Parking can be tricky and yeah, you can get everywhere you need to go either through walking or public transportation. And then in terms of my favorite places, um, it's a little bit hard because I am from the area. So like I've lived here my entire life. I have a lot of favorite places, but Definitely the fire trails that Tina mentioned behind our campus. Um, I go up there like probably at least once a week and I still don't get tired of the view. So I would say that's an amazing place to go. Um, also just checking out different restaurants in the city. Um, and then if you do have access to a car and wanna go a little further, there's some great hiking both in the East Bay and in Marin, um, which is just over a bridge from Berkeley. So I would say those are definitely the main things that I would do in my free time, especially right now during COVID. But yeah, there's no shortage of things to do and it's all pretty accessible in Berkeley. I totally agree. I think that definitely walking, just especially around campus given the hills, but shout out to the 51B, that bus gets me from Trader Joe's to Trader Joe's and there's really nowhere else that I need to be. So we're just rolling into our last or penultimate question. And that is, what are some of your favorite and most unique traditions at Cal? Andres, do you want to tackle that one? Yeah, I'll go really quick. My favorite tradition on Cal is yelling, go bears, at any time so it's like when you come out of a test whether you did good or bad or you know mm, you know just that sound mm, you yell go bears whether you're just in a crowded group uh or when we had crowded groups of people you would yell go bears and this really just you know helped to connect the community i think my favorite memory is it being uh, I think two in the morning, uh, maybe the neighbors will hate me, but I just yelled go bears into Cal, yeah, around Cal at the top of my lungs. And I got like seven responses in the distance. So whenever, uh, never be in fear, the go bears will always be near. 
And a big go bears to that indeed, Andres. <laughs> all right, so our final question is definitely something that is probably on all of our admitted students and waitlisted students' minds. And that is, why did you choose Berkeley? What has been the most fulfilling part of being a student here? And just generally, what makes it home for you? So if we could have Andres go first and then Tina and Beatrix. Sorry, my mic. Um, but uh, the my my Berkeley story what really does involve my family and really does involve the people in the community I was surrounded by. So uh, as I had mentioned beforehand, I come from an underrepresented community. Uh, my family is low income, and as well as I'm, I'm a first generation student, so it was really difficult to try and get my footing in any type of like idea of me finding myself in higher education. So when high school came around, I said, you know what. Uh, I have my, I have a good support system and I have people around me who are really trying to push me to do the best and to follow my dreams. You know, my dreams were ranging from being a nuclear engineer to a chemical engineer to an aerospace engineer and then to political science. So, you know, uh, I wasn't the easiest people to handle back in my high school days, but they still supported me and they were still there for me. Um, you know, they weren't holding my hand, but they said, you know, we're here, you go do your thing. And I applied to as many schools as I could. And, uh, Thankfully, I got a, a good amount of acceptances back. So it was just the choice to say, where can I find myself? Uh, I think there's this amazing quote I, that also circulates within the campus of Master community where it's all like, it's not choosing the school that's right for you now. It's choosing the school that's right for you in five years, the, the person that you'll be in five years from now. And I said, you know what? Uh, I, as much as, as scary as it can be to moving around you know, seven hours away, right, Tina, from Southern California to the Bay Area, I said, I'm going to take this risk, and I'm going to go for it, and I found myself in that community, and I was able to say, you know what, uh, this community really does try and help me, and, and you know, one thing I really did hope, uh, I hope, I wish I knew back then that I know now, is that as a Cal student, it, there's a lot more collaboration, and there's a lot more friendship, and there's a lot more community, uh, it, in regards to like what people say in general, like we truly do, you know, have that go bears and golden bearer spirit where it's like, once you're in our den, you know, everything will be just all right. And I, I, you know, I'm so happy to be able to say I have so many different families from my campus ambassador family to my student org families. And it's just a really great community that I found myself a part of. I always love hearing your Berkeley story, Andres. <laughs> Brings tears to my eyes. Um, mine is a little different, a little similar. Um, I never ever thought I would go to Berkeley just because uh, I'm from a smaller town, a smaller high school, and I really enjoyed it growing up. So I thought I wanted, you know, a smaller college, not within a big town, which is the exact opposite of what Berkeley is. But I applied to Berkeley because you'll be a fool not to apply to Berkeley. It's such a great program. So I applied, I got in and still I was like, do I want to go to Berkeley? Like it's so different from all my other options, but I decided to go to Cal Day and it was kind of having like having an out of body experience. There were like giant robots in one corner and like people dancing in another corner. And the College of Engineering was giving out free breakfast burritos. And if there's one way in my heart, it's free food, specifically breakfast burritos. I love me a breakfast burrito. And for some reason, I was like, if I come to Berkeley, I can have free breakfast burritos every single day. You do not get free breakfast burritos every single day. But that was, uh, it was a fun time. But um, as I started talking to the people around me, I just heard about how they were passionate about so many things. Like when I was talking to the engineers or talking about how like they wanna like create these new things and like talking to science majors, talking about like how they wanna change the world in this way and just things like that. And I knew that I wanted to do something for the world, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I didn't know how exactly I was gonna get there. But being surrounded by these such passion people, these change makers, these people I know for sure will do something. My mom always said, surround yourself with the people you want to be like. And being there on Cal Day, talking to these people, I knew that I wanted to be like them one day. So at that moment, I knew that Berkeley wasn't exactly where I thought I was gonna end up, but it's exactly where I needed to be. So here I am. 
Wow, it's really hard to follow those Berkeley stories. Um, they're so good, it's so nice to hear, but I'll try my best. Um, so like Tina, I did not wanna to go to Berkeley. It never crossed my mind, um, but for slightly different reasons, mostly just because I lived right next to the campus and I didn't see it as a place where I could become independent just because it was too close to my home. I thought that I had to go really far away for college. Um, but even after I got in, my mom convinced me to take a campus tour. Um, and as Tina said, it's hard just not even to explore that option. Um, and when I took that tour, I realized what Berkeley would look like from the perspective of a student, which is just something I had never really considered before. Um, I saw that it was that big school that I wanted with all the school spirit and traditions and the football games and the rallies, everything that comes with that. I also saw that it was in the perfect location with that mix of being in a city, having access to other cities, but also having easy access to nature um, was definitely something that I wanted in a college. And lastly, I knew that coming in undeclared, I wanted to go somewhere where no matter what I studied, I would be working with professors at the top of their field. And I absolutely knew that that was the case at Berkeley and not only have I gotten the pleasure of taking classes from those professors, but they've given me some really good advice. I saw someone earlier asked um, what major, how you decided what major you wanted to pursue. It was advice from one of my professors who told me, you have to think about which way of explaining the world makes sense to you. Um, and that really stuck with me because every single major is a different way of explaining how things in the world work. Um, and that was just advice that I took as I took other classes, I realized that there were just some disciplines that stuck out and really clicked for me. Um, so it was really that process of exploration that I couldn't have had at other schools that I'm so grateful that I had at Berkeley that helped me find disciplines that I'm really excited about now. So that's why I chose Berkeley um, and why I stayed is really the people being surrounded by people who, as you can hopefully tell from this panel, are so passionate about everything that they do is so different from the community that I grew up in. And it makes it feel like I'm really far away, even though I'm not at all. So it's absolutely the right choice for me. And I'm very happy that I made it. Oh my gosh, you three are just too powerful. Those Berkeley stories have me choked up. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you to all of our fantastic attendees for all of your questions. We've just so enjoyed spending this hour with you and we hope that you can see why Berkeley is so special to us and why we hope it can be hopefully home for you and as special to you. So we just like to share a few resources before we go for you to peruse as you make your decisions over the next few weeks. First off, if you're not following us on social media, you have to because we post all the time. They are fantastic. And we have our stories of ambassadors. We have Ber more Berkeley stories. If you want to hear more reasons about why Berkeley has been home for our ambassadors. And that is all found on Instagram at visit UC Berkeley. You can also register for another virtual campus visit or virtual engineering visit at caladmit.com. And this is, of course, only for our admitted and waitlisted students. There's also tons and tons of recordings virtual campus visits and student panels on our YouTube channel, which is at Visit UC Berkeley. You can also subscribe while you're there. We also have 150 years of women being celebrated this past year in 2020. And so that is, of course, the 150th anniversary of women being admitted to UC Berkeley. And there's all sorts of really cool stories and initiatives going on because of that at 150w.berkeley.edu. And finally, there is the Bear Talk blog which is a blog where many of our ambassadors post about their experiences at Cal and their lives as college students, which can be found at beartalk.berkeley.edu. Finally, if you do decide to commit to Cal, and we so, so hope you do, please, please post it with the hashtag I am Berkeley. We would really, really like to see all of you on campus next year, and we hope you all the best during this next month of decision making. With that, once again, congratulations to all of our amazing admitted students and waitlisted students. We hope that this has been an informative and enriching experience to you, and we will now just send you off with the only way that Berkeley knows how. So on the count of three, if all of our panelists want to join me, one, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Thank you so much.